In 1800, 300 years later, a man named William Miller predicted that Christ would return on her around April the 3rd of 1843. He added a day. All over the Northeast, 500,000 of his followers awaited the end of the world. That's a lot of people in 1843. That's a lot. Some of them made their way to the top of mountains. They wanted to get a head start to heaven. Others were in graveyards. They wanted to go up with their, their, their loved ones who had died before them. Didn't happen. A retired NASA engineer by the name of Edgar Wissenden told sold 4.3 million copies of a book that he wrote going into great detail with mathematical proof that Jesus was coming back in 1988. Then he, then he came out again after 1988 and he said he missed it, he made a miscalculation and he said it'd be 1989 and he was wrong. I'm not trying to humiliate any of these people, I'm just saying no man knows the day or the hour. Conditions in the world indicate to me and should to you that Jesus could return very soon, but I don't know the day and the hour. I will not put a date on his return. I do think we should get ready. We should be ready because when he does come, it will be too late to get ready. So I will say that part. And so, um, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples asked him, tell us, when shall these things be? Second thing I want to say is Jesus told his followers what will happen before he returns. And so we can at least wake up. It's kind of like an alarm clock going off saying it's going to happen, but we don't know when. But he said, we believe that he was Jesus Christ and that he was the one and he had come back and now he was reigning and he was marrying thousands of couples at a time and they thought he was the Messiah. No, not the Messiah. So you're going to hear from time to time, this one's it, this one's it, those are it, whatever. No. When he comes back, you will know it. When Jesus Christ comes back, it's going to happen in the twinkling of an eye and there won't be any doubt and there will no question and no mathematical calculations. He's going to come too fast for that. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. That's happening today. Yep. It's happening today. There is, there is a famous TV preacher. His father has remained faithful to the Word of God, but his son, who is reaching tens of thousands of people, has declared he's not going to talk about hell anymore because people don't want to hear about hell. Well, I don't want to hear about hell. I'd rather hear about heaven. Amen? I'm going to heaven. But people need to know if they reject Jesus Christ, they're not going to heaven just because they want to. It says the time will come in 2 Timothy 4, 3, people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside the myths. One of the things that I like about Pastor Kirk Beard He's 42 years old. I find very few Baptist pastors today who are still remaining true to Orthodox biblical faith. And he does. I may not like the shoes he wears or the suit. He had, to be, he had a nice suit on today. That is irrelevant. He's preaching the word of God. And you see it in the demonstrated in the life of his wife and his children. I see evidence that he has sound faith in Jesus Christ and he won't compromise the truth. And I gotta say, I'd rather have a brother who loves me, I love him, and especially preaches the word of God than I would anything else. All the bells and whistles don't matter to me. I want to know somebody that loves Jesus Christ, loves people. He also has a pastor heart, which I don't find everybody has a pastor heart. There's a pastor that actually, I know two pastors who've said, don't expect me to counsel you or to come visit you or to pray with you. And I'm thinking that's part of the call to be a pastor is you minister to people. We're supposed to serve people. I get to. I don't have to. I get to. <coughs> so it's too bad. I love you. There isn't a thing you can do about it. That's the way it is. But anyway, back to this. It just says a lot of people don't want to. 
There are groups, I don't want to go through a name of them. I'm not in the business of calling out every other group. You know many of them by name. <coughs> uh, one of them's in the valley up at the north end of San Jacinto. It's a group of people who are unfortunately being deceived with false teaching, but it's, they're looking for an answer and they went to the wrong place for an answer. Islam, there's right now the media is on this thing about trying to say we have to bring and need to bring in refugees from Somalia, Yemen, fill out the, you know, Libya, wherever, into the United States, and uh, we should just bring them in, you know, don't, don't worry about these guys. I'm thinking, watch what's going on over there in these countries. They're, they're blowing up stuff and killing people and shooting, really shooting people. So it's like, we don't need that. And we need to wake up America and we need to protect the people that are here. If people come here, like my ancestors and many of your ancestors did, and they're coming here looking for religious freedom, and they're looking for a place to serve God, then we would, of course, welcome them to come here and be part of our culture. But if people come here wanting to change our culture and take away our religious freedom and say you have to convert to another religion or die, I don't want to bring them over here. Come on. I'm just, I'm just saying so when somebody's preaching any other gospel, anything other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God who came from heaven to take our sin upon himself, to die upon a cross, he was buried, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. If any preaches there's any other way to go to heaven than Jesus Christ, it's not true. I'm just, just saying, it's, it's not true. Other thing that's going to happen, not only will people want people to say whatever they want, like, this is what I want you to say, preacher. <laughs> I'm just going to go by this. I'm not apologizing. This is, my, this is my guide right there. Second, wars, rumors of wars are going to occur. Now, that's been going on. Wars and rumors of wars for thousands of years. So i got to say, what's different about that? The world's attention has been focused on the Middle East. In fact, is there a day that goes by that Israel is not in the news? I don't think. And I'm thinking, it is amazing. They've been in the news for 3,000 years. It's, it's astounding, if you think about it. For a long time, they thought Israel was down for the count. No more Israel, right? From AD 70 until 1948. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's back again. i got to say, that's a sign. That's a wake up. That's a sign. It says, you'll hear these wars and rumors of wars. By the way, there will never be peace in the Middle East. I don't care who signs the deal, what promises they make, what land they give away. It's never going to happen until people can accept that Israel has a right by God to exist. That's what I'm saying. So the United States is engaged in a war on terrorism. Now, some people don't like to call it that. It's not very nice. But the truth is, they're at war with us whether we choose to be at war with them or not. And so I just say, wake up. A group, a separate group from the government called Global Security uh, reports there are 38 armed conflicts around the world right now. 38 major armed conflicts where at least a thousand people are dying in every conflict every year. Some of them, many more, many more than that. The war on drugs. There's, it, it's almost more dangerous in Mexico, and this is tragic because we all have friends from the, uh, our Mexican citizens or uh, from Mexico. Uh, I used to go there a lot when I was a kid. I love the people down there. But the tragedy is that the, the regular people like we are down in Mexico are under great threat of their own life all the time because of drugs, the drug cartels. It's terrible. Does that mean we should just let them in? Well, I would say if they're here seeking true refuge and want to become a loyal citizen of the United States, swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States, and they're not trying to change it, they just want to go to work in a safe place and be good citizens, that's what you call a proper immigration policy. But when you've got people that want to come in here to sell drugs and to do crime, I'm not in favor of saying that's okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm <laughs> Y'all going to know what I actually think about things today. And Ron said that they would like to see the nation of Israel wiped off the face of the earth. I don't think that's a good thing to sign an agreement with somebody who says, our intention is to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. 
because it won't stop there. If you just said, I don't like Israel, go ahead and do it, which I'm not saying that, okay? But I'm just saying, even if you were there, you realize it wouldn't stop there. That would be the first step. Did you know a Chinese military leader told reporters that China is prepared to use nuclear weapons against hundreds of United States cities? Why does the media report this? He said, if a conflict breaks out over Taiwan, they're preparing to launch missiles against the United States. And I'm thinking, shh, don't, 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 shh, don't tell anybody. They'll get all upset. I am thinking we need to be awake. What's this a sign of? Jesus is getting ready to come back. I'm telling you, don't worry. Don't worry. Just be aware. Nobody can pry you out of his hand. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying keep the faith. Keep the faith. Trust God when you can't trust anyone and anything else, especially yourself. <laughs> trust God. Trust God. And the gospel is to be preached in all the world. I love it. We have a God story as one example. All of our Southern Baptist missionaries are all over the world, even in places like Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Syria. We have missionaries there. And they're preaching the gospel and giving out uh, recorded devices with the scriptures in their language, their local language, wherever they are. All of our missionaries, from all the groups that do all medical missionaries, the doctors and the nurses and the people that go all over the world, they're accomplishing the fulfillment of scripture. That's what's happening today. I don't believe everyone in the world has heard the gospel, but I think when the last person's heard the gospel or had opportunity to have heard it, you're going to hear a shofar blown. It's a, we call it bugle, but it's a made out of a horn. And it says, then the end shall come. So you want to know when? I think we're pretty close because all the other things that we're talking about are already going on. And we're just trying to get the word out to everybody. When we get the word out to everybody, we will not be here anymore. The good news is, it says in the end, and I don't have time for a while, I'll get into it next week. In Revelation it says the whole world will worship the Antichrist, but the believers won't. It kind of says to me, if the believers won't, and all the world will be worshiping the Antichrist, we won't be here. That's what it says. It's real simple. Very simple. Okay, let's go to number three. Abomination of desolation will stand in the holy place. This did happen in Antiochus Epiphanes. This did happen when the Romans went into the temple and destroyed the temple. I'm not sure what it means today specifically when it says the abomination of desolation will stand in the holy place. Unless I stop and I read other scripture and I'm reminded that we are the temple. We're the temple today. If we allow demonic and satanic influence to stand in our life, we're fulfilling this terrible prophecy. I say, reject demonic thoughts, demonic ideas, false beliefs. Just stick to the strict gospel of Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Him. Trust the Word of God. Stand firm in your faith and don't allow sin encroach into your life and take over control of your life. Let Jesus be in control of your life and you don't have to worry about this.